Hello everyone and welcome back to the Futech HD channel. In this video, we will explore extremely effective stone and concrete cutting methods and technologies. Stone cutting technology and quarrying has undergone significant advancements, revolutionizing the industry and increasing efficiency. Before the introduction of diamond wire technology, quarrying methods involved compressed air drilling, wedges and shims for breakout, jet burning, L blasting, and the use of drifters and specialized explosives. However, diamond wire technology, employing motors and pulleys, has transformed quarrying techniques. A diamond wire consists of a central steel woven core with diamond beads. The beads, approximately a quarter of an inch in diameter and one quarter to three eighths of an inch long, are inserted onto the steel core. This wire is attached to a machine that rotates it and either pulls or pushes it slowly through the stone, with the diamond beads performing the cutting. The implementation of diamond technology, along with other developments such as using massive front-end loaders instead of derricks and stiff legs, has significantly increased cubic feet produced per man-hour. This affordable quarrying technology has made it possible to extract stone from quarries previously considered inaccessible. Consequently, it has led to exponential business growth in countries that began quarrying and exporting stone. Diamond wire technology has also been introduced in the slabbing process, drastically reducing the time required to cut large blocks of stone into slabs. Previously, it could take two to three days to slab a granite block using old gang saws with feed rates of only three quarters of an inch per hour. With the new technology, machines can employ up to 20 strands of wire, cutting slabs as thick as three quarters of an inch at a rate of 12 to 14 inches per hour. These advancements have made quarrying companies more efficient. For example, North Carolina Granite has increased its production volume while reducing its workforce from approximately 250 to 275 employees to 130 employees. Similar improvements have been observed in other companies, such as Independent Limestone Company in Indiana, which now uses safer and more efficient wire saws and handling equipment. The advent of computer-assisted technology has further propelled the industry forward. Quarrying companies can program desired stone profiles into their computers, which are then sent to the saws for precise cutting. This level of automation has made the process easier and more accurate. The Husqvarna FS7000DL is a robust and powerful concrete floor saw designed for high production in deep cutting applications. With its optimized size, weight, and balance, this walk-behind saw delivers impressive performance when cutting through asphalt and concrete surfaces. At the heart of the FS7000DL is a Jutes turbo diesel engine that provides a rated output power of 50.4 kilowatts. This engine delivers sustainable torque, maximizing production rates even in challenging conditions. Additionally, the option for EPA Stage 4 or EU Stage 5 compliant engines ensures compliance with the latest emission standards. The saw features a maximum blade diameter of 1,500 mm, allowing for efficient and precise cutting. With a maximum cutting depth of 623 mm, it is capable of tackling thick, concrete surfaces with ease. The deep cutting capability makes it suitable for a wide range of construction projects. The Husqvarna FS7000DL offers convenient and user-friendly features. The tracking can be easily adjusted to ensure straight cuts, enhancing accuracy and efficiency. The intuitive and ergonomic control panel simplifies operation, allowing operators to work comfortably and effectively. The saw's modern and service-friendly design ensures easy maintenance and accessibility to key components. 
electronic support systems further enhance operator efficiency and convenience, improving overall productivity. The Husqvarna FS7000DL can be customized with additional features such as a blade clutch, electronic tracking system, light kit, water pump kit, and weight kits. These options allow operators to tailor the saw to their specific requirements, further enhancing its versatility. Cutting stone is a fascinating process that requires skill, precision, and patience. It is an art that has been practiced for centuries, and even in today's modern age, traditional techniques are still used to shape and divide massive blocks of stone. One such example can be seen at the Deer Isle Hostel in beautiful Down East Maine. Dennis Carter, the founder and owner of the Deer Isle Hostel, embarked on a monumental task, cutting a colossal 26,000-pound block of Deer Isle granite into two equal parts. Armed with nothing more than a humble two-pound hammer, Carter set out to transform this massive stone into smaller blocks that would be used for the foundation of a workshop. To accomplish this monumental feat, Carter employed a method known as feather and wedge splitting. This technique involves creating a series of holes along the desired splitting line and inserting metal feathers and wedges into them. As Carter worked his way around the block, the holes gradually increased in size. With each strike of the hammer, the pressure on the stone intensified, slowly but surely creating a small crack between the feathers and wedges. That sounded hollow. That's good. Oh boy. As the crack formed and propagated through the stone, a faint but audible sound could be heard, akin to the cheer of the split traveling down the granite. Carter understood the importance of proceeding slowly during this process. Each strike of the hammer encouraged the growth of cracks along the crystal structure of the stone, and by allowing them to develop gradually, he ensured that the split would occur cleanly and without any unwanted fractures. So once we've cut this, it will open up, we'll have two cleaner faces, and then we'll split off those cleaner faces. This rock contains about 150... The cutting of such a massive block required considerable time and effort. Carter estimated that it would take approximately an hour to complete the split. As he diligently continued striking the feathers and wedges, the stone gradually gave way to the immense pressure being applied. Water began to flow from the crack, evidence of the immense forces at play. With each strike, the crack widened, and the sound of the stone shifting and groaning became more pronounced. Finally, the moment arrived when the crack opened up, revealing two distinct pieces of rock. Carter had successfully split the massive block into two equal parts, a testament to his skill and determination. However, the process was far from complete. Now that the block had been divided, the next step involved cleaning up the faces of the split sections. Any rough edges or imperfections needed to be carefully smoothed out to ensure a clean and precise finish. Once this was accomplished, the smaller blocks would be split off from the cleaner faces. Back right to there. 
In total, this 26,000 pound block of Deer Isle granite would yield around 20 blocks of equal size, each measuring 8 inches by 16 inches by 5 feet. These blocks would contain approximately 5 cubic feet of granite and weigh around 800 pounds apiece. With 20 blocks obtained, there would still be 50 cubic feet of granite remaining, which could be used for other purposes. Cutting stone is a laborious and time-consuming process, but it is one that yields remarkable results. The skill and precision required to split massive blocks with simple tools like hammers and wedges are awe-inspiring. Dennis Carter's endeavor at the Deer Isle Hostel showcases the enduring art of stone cutting and the remarkable possibilities that lie within these ancient materials. This section shows core drilling process undertaken by Concrete Cutting and Breaking Company in Homa, Louisiana. The company used the 60 inches concrete core drills to create precise and clean holes in concrete structures. The process begins with the operators carefully analyzing the project requirements and determining the specific locations where holes need to be drilled. Core drilling offers versatility in terms of hole diameter capable of drilling holes ranging from 3 quarters to 60 inches in diameter. This flexibility allows the operators to cater to a wide range of hole size requirements for the project. Once the drilling locations are identified, the operators set up the 60 inches concrete core drill, which is designed to handle 60 inches diameter holes. The core drill is equipped with a diamond-tipped core bit, which is essential for effectively cutting through the tough and dense concrete. The operators initiate the core drilling process by carefully positioning the core drill's bit on the marked drilling location. The drill's powerful motor is engaged, and the diamond-tipped core bit begins rotating and cutting into the concrete. As the drill advances, it removes a cylindrical core of material from the structure. During the core drilling operation, the operators ensure precision and accuracy by maintaining control over the drill and monitoring the drilling depth. They may employ various techniques to ensure the stability of the drill and prevent any damage to the surrounding area. Core drilling offers significant advantages, such as the ability to create openings of various sizes and depths, depending on the project requirements. It is commonly used in construction, infrastructure projects, and industrial applications, allowing for the installation of utilities, anchors, and reinforcements within the concrete structures.